read the life of a cell all right it's a beautiful little book and when you look inside of a cell you'll see little protons and neutrons and little atoms, whatever all the things that are inside this cell whether it's a rhinoceros's nose or whether it's your ear or whether it's a hair or whether it's a piece of dust or whatever but just assume it's you a tiny little cell inside of you what holds the cell together what makes the cell stay together do you ever think of that why doesn't your nose slide off <laughs> don't you ever think of that <laughs> You gotta start thinking of these things. How come your arm always hangs there, you know? How come it doesn't just fall off one day? It's always there, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. What's making these cells stay together? Well, scientists can't even answer that. They get to the thing that they call the source, that within every living cell, there's something called the source. A heart starts beating inside a mother's womb seven or eight weeks after conception, and we have no idea. <laughs> It's a total mystery to us. Not a physician on the planet can figure it out. Where was that life before? Where did it come from? Where does it go when it's not doing that? And what made that heart beat out of nothing? How does that work? What is that? And how come in that tiny little drop of protoplasm is everything you need? I mean, it's your elbows in there, that hair that's growing over here that you don't want anymore. That's in that little drop there. And you can't stop it. You can't reverse it. It's all in there. The growth that has taken place in you since it's like it's all in that tiny little speck that you can't even see inside that cell. Life is such a mystery, this form business, until you begin to see that that isn't what life is. Like the person who eats the package and focuses on the package instead of the content. The package is your form. The real you, you wouldn't want to toss away, and so many of us do. Now, when there is harmony within a cell, within a tiniest cell you can find in your body, what happens to the cell adjacent to it? It cooperates with that cell, doesn't it? It cooperates with that cell. It doesn't eat it up, it doesn't try to hurt it, it doesn't try to destroy it. It is at peace, it is at harmony, and so harmony and cooperation become the essence of life. When there is not ease or serenity or peace, within a cell, that is when there is dis-ease or disharmony or an absence of serenity or arrogance rather than peace or aggressiveness, what happens to the cell next to it? it gobbles it up, it gets aggressive, it eats it up. It has no reference to the whole. Something that has no reference to the whole means that it has no regard for the whole. Like you have many, many life forms on you that are ugly if you look at them. Look inside your eyelid and study it. And you'll see millions of little life forms and then you magnify them. They're, they're, they got claws and they got, they got teeth and, they, and they're in your eyelid and there's millions of them. But they have a reference to the whole. They don't gobble up your eyeball. <laughs> you know, they don't say, I think I'll take the ear today. They don't do that. They stay where they belong and they have a reference to the whole. And they work in conjunction with or in harmony with the whole. As do all the bugs in the lining of your stomach and in your intestine and your toenails inside your nose. They all have a reference to the whole, but cancer doesn't do that, does it? So it will eat up each cell because it doesn't have harmony within. And what will it do to itself? It'll destroy itself, won't it? A cancer in society is the same way. A cancer in society is one of us who is one cell, who doesn't have ease within itself, and has no reference to the whole, that is all the rest of us, or all of society, and doesn't see itself as part of all of you, and it will gobble up all of those around it until it destroys itself, doesn't it? So what is the answer to a cancer in our body and a cancer in our society? Is to get harmony within. And when you get harmony within, you cooperate with the cell next to you in order to save yourself. Now that's just like a little mini lesson in metaphysical philosophy. Now imagine me up here with you making yourself into a cell for a second so that you've got all these tiny little cells and this philosophy applies now imagine we can all just stand back and see all of humanity six and a half billion of us or six billion of us is that what we have now and here is this huge mosaic that constitutes all of humanity and it's a puzzle and it has six billion pieces in it but there's one missing and you can get back far enough and see it where do your eyes go right to the missing piece. The totality of that life form is not complete without that missing piece, is it? That's how important you are. You make all of humanity complete. You are the I that is we. 
just like the eye that is we, that is inside of your pancreas, you are alive with life. All the different bacteria and all the, the trillions of cells and so on. And it's like you walk around all day long, you think, gee, I'm an individual all by myself and I'm an island and all that. And you've got zillions of little things inside of you going, <laughs> going. And without them, you can't make it. And when something comes along inside your organism that no longer has a reference to the whole, isn't connected to the whole, you're eliminated and so is it. Aren't you? Disharmony then becomes the thing that destroys us. And as long as you are in harmony and positive, and when people say, well, positive thinking is just a crock, it isn't in the sense that a positive thought keeps you in harmony with the universe and a negative thought keeps you away from it. Because we are thought and the universe is thought, the fastest vibration, we have the capacity to either destroy or create. And we're the only things that do. That's why we're different than a pig and a horse, because we have a mind. And that mind is part of the universal mind. That unity, that oneness is not any different like I am as connected to you but just because I'm 10 feet away from you I am still a part of this totality called humanity just like the bug that is 8 feet away from me down in my toenail which seems so distant from me but is still a part of me is real as well it's all one so that oneness that universalness is not just some speculation you connect to it all and if all of us have harmony within us gentle harmony within us and we're flowing with the universe it's just the most powerful thing in the world